Today, following on from our last film, we're putting our newfound confidence with Iron Sights to the test as we set out in search of live quarry. You might be fooled for thinking that this was Northern Europe in the middle of January. No, it's the middle of March and we're in Hampshire and the beast from the east has dropped a blanket of snow over the countryside. Of course, one of the disadvantages of using open sights or iron sights as we also call them is the fact that you don't have the light gathering potential that you get from a fine set of optics. Um, that's of course the downside. The, the good side, James, is the fact that students like Connor here get an extra half hour or so in bed, Definitely. which I think for all students is much appreciated. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but at any rate, just be mindful of the fact that if you are going to shoot with iron sights or open sights, it's not worth starting early in the morning or late in the evening at dusk or dawn because you're simply not going to be able to acquire your target easily in the sights. The other disadvantage, of course, is that we are unable to shoot at the types of ranges which you would otherwise be able to shoot at with a good scope. And so we are going to have to employ all of our field craft skills to get in close. Our trials on the range last month have illustrated to us that we are good out to about 100 yards. And this film is all about embracing the skill of open sight shooting with the art of stalking as a means of reconnecting with our quarry. Today James is using the highly acclaimed Highland Stalker rifle from John Rigby Gunmakers in the iconic 275 Rigby. With the skies darkening and more snow threatening we leave the woodlands and head for open ground. Okay, so we've got a couple of row up ahead of us, about 150 yards at the moment. And of course, the thing about open sights is, and what we learned from last time, is the fact that we really need to be getting within 100. Uh, so we're going to knock off about 50 yards or so, James, yeah. if that's right with you. See if we can get you a little bit closer yeah. and uh, see how comfortable you are at that stage. Good. We'll keep low and we'll uh, see how we get on. We're forced to knock off 100 yards before we can get in range to use the iron sights. We're forced into a crawl in order to cut down the range to about 90 yards. Using a convenient fence post, James takes up position. Anxious minutes pass as we wait for the buck to come clear of the doe. It's a great shot and the rodo drops on the spot. James reloads, but the shot is good. Great, so we've done it. We've proven that we can stalk deer with iron sights. James, well done, mate. Thank Great you very season. much, Peter. Fabulous. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Really enjoyed that one. We spotted those two deer at about 200 yards, broke off a good 100, 110 yards, mm -hmm. a real crawl at the end there, cut down to about 80 or 90. Yes, and, and we knew that from the practicing on the range, we wanted to get into that type of uh, uh, distance to the animal, get, 
keeping it uh, back to basics, getting close to the uh, the beast as well, which we were able to accomplish. Yeah, that. we've got to be fair to our quarry here. Mm -hmm. and, but that's not to say that optics are redundant. No. Um, one thing that was absolutely crucial there is finding the deer in the first place. And there you need a really good pair of binoculars. I've got a set of Swarovski EL rangefinders here, which is great for two reasons. Firstly, it allows us to assess what range we're at, but also the magnification allows us to spot what is crucial when we're stalking doe at the row at this time of year, and that is the anal tush of the doe. And shot placement, James? Yeah, shot placement, uh, slightly high, but still she dropped to the shot. I uh, just want to also point out that uh, you know, she's a definitely an older animal, but perfect for uh, culling this time of year as well. Uh, poor girl, she's missing quite a few teeth here, so uh, definitely, definitely a good one to take out of the herd. One of the first things to see actually when you're aging deer is how w uh, ground down their teeth are and uh, yeah, she's a real old girl, yeah. isn't she? Yeah, so a perfect cull yeah. animal. But mate, absolutely, I'm chuffed to bits. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic, mate. Thank well you, buddy. I appreciate Congratulations. it. I'm looking forward to roast. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a fantastic day, and I hope you've enjoyed this insight into some of the pros and cons of stalking with open sights. Finally, our thanks go to John Rigby Gunmakers for the loan of their superb Highland Stalker rifle. If you'd like to try out John Rigby's Highland Stalker, or if you'd simply like to come deer stalking with us at County Deer Stalking, then telephone 01403 790244 or visit our website www.countydeerstalking forward slash go stalking